In this video, I'm going to show you how you can integrate your Apple TV into your smart home with Home Assistant. I'm going to give you today two automation ideas to showcase some of the possibilities with the Apple TV integration into Home Assistant. First one will be streaming a baby monitor whenever the baby monitor triggers onto our Apple TV. And the second one we're going to look at today, we're going to look at actually setting a scene when we start playing a movie on Apple TV to maybe calibrate all our lights and set the mood. This is Gio from Smart Home Makers. In this channel, I do smart home reviews, product reviews, give you automation ideas and inspire you to build a better smart home. Now let's roll the intro. Since the latest version of Home Assistant 2020-12, Apple TV is now auto-discoverable from the UI itself. So if you go to your integrations tab, you should see it there. There's no need to tinker with the configuration.yaml file now. To set it all up, what you need to do is go to the integrations page, look for the auto discovery Apple TV. If you can't find it, you can add it with the add integration button and search Apple TV. Now you're going to have to put a couple of pins that are going to appear on your screen. Once you put them in, submit, and we should have our Apple TV paired into Home Assistant. Now add it to an area. And now if we look at the entities, we have two entities, a remote entity and a media player entity. And we can change this to something a bit more memorable. And remember, we're going to need this in the automation. In our first automation of today, we're going to look at streaming the baby camera onto our Apple TV when two conditions are met. First condition, our baby is sleeping. And the other condition that there's motion and there's motion for at least two minutes in the room. Also, the two minutes are there in, in terms of catching out false alarms and also giving some time for the uh, kid to settle himself or herself. To do this project today, I'm using obviously an Apple TV, but you could use a Chromecast. You need a IP camera that's integrated into Home Assistant. In my example, I have a unified G3 Flex. Then we need a motion sensor in the room. Input Boolean tells us the baby's asleep or not. And you can toggle the input Boolean with either a button you can use um, Home Assistant UI dashboard to toggle it on and off, or you can use an N NFC card and you can tap it with your mobile phone. Navigate to our configuration tab. So you should see an area called helpers. Click on helpers and there's going to be a little button on the bottom right hand side, add helper. And we're going to add a toggle helper. So it's either on or off. So asleep or awake in our example. And we just give it a name. So for example, baby status. Icon is used to give a little icon at the uh, end of the input boolean so you can recognize it easier, easily. Or you can type MDI, colon, and then just say baby. And you can see here, you have the little image. So once that is done, you'll tap create. So once that's created, in my example, I've already created it. It's the baby sleeping. And I've got this input boolean dot baby underscore sleep. So now take this text here, copy it and paste it somewhere safe because we're going to need it in our automation. Now let, we need to identify the motion sensor and the camera. So go to our, let's go to the developer tools and let's search for our UVC, in my example, UVC Flex. So this is the camera that I'm actually going to be using. So what I would suggest is to take this uh, UVC Flex ID Put that in your notepad and the third element we're going to need is our motion sensor in my example i'm using this landing sensor underscore two motion and it's actually a philips two motion sensor that is integrated into home system through the bridge so we've got all the three components now we can go into the automations tab and we can actually create the automation so go to configuration go into automations and there's a button here called add automation. Now you can either add automation to the UI or you can actually create code. And I'm gonna show you how you can do both. But we're gonna start with the UI first. So click add automation. I'm using, I'm gonna use a start with an empty automation. Automation is basically based on three parts, a trigger, an action, and a condition. So you need a trigger because that is what starts the automation. The action is what happens when the automation is triggered and the condition is sort of like saying a well it happens but if you know these statuses are set so in our example we're going to use the uh, baby asleep as a condition so we don't want this to trigger if 
he, uh, he or she are, you know, they're not asleep. We need to give it a name and we need to give it a description. Make it very descriptive and give it a really good name. Now, because then you'll remember actually down the line you'll need it. So I'm gonna call it stream camera when motion detected while baby asleep. Okay, that's very uh, straightforward. You can have a description in there. So the trigger, the first part we're gonna change. So we're gonna change the trigger type and we're gonna use state. And here we're gonna pick the entity that we actually uh, had before. So we can search for landing sensor to motion. So you can either type it all out, copy and paste it in, or you can just search for it and you can find it. Basically it will go from cleared to detected or off to on. So we want on, meaning there is motion in that, in that moment. And in the full parameter, well, I'm gonna leave this empty for now and I'm gonna modify that later but I'm gonna add in two minutes. Condition, we're using the state, again, as a condition type. The entity that we're going to use is our uh, input boolean. Baby uh, sleep, and we want this to be on. The last bit that we need to add is the action. So the action is what actually happens. This is going to be our service. So we're going to call a particular service and this service is going to be camera.play underscore stream. Now here we need to, we've already uh, pre-filtered with the camera entities, so you can't get go wrong. So I'm gonna use this camera here, the UVC Flex. Now in this part, we need to fill in some data. So we need to pass some parameters to the service. So what we're passing is the actual destination of where this is gonna to stream to. So this is gonna be your entity ID of your Apple TV, which we uh, set up and configured earlier on in the video. So just type data, colon, then go enter, give it two spaces, and you can uh, specify the following. So entity ID underscore, so we're gonna repeat the same camera as before. This is more of a belts and braces approach. I don't know if you can get away without doing this, but you can try and test it out yourself. And now we need a media player, then dot ATV. So I'm just giving this a double check. If I've made any mistakes, I'll let you know, but I think it's fine. So I'm going to save this. Now that this has been saved, we've got two extra options on the screen. We have an enable, disable automation, and we have an execute automation. This execute automation is gonna allow us to actually uh, trigger it and it's gonna pretend that the trigger happened and it's gonna ignore the condition. So it's not really 100% a way of actually testing that it actually works. It's mainly testing the action part, that the action part works. So this is sort of uh, not really the best way to test it. The best way to test it is the way I'm gonna show you now. First thing we need to set, if the baby's asleep or not, you can turn it off and you can turn it on very simply. So that's so, so once that is done, the second condition will be the actual landing sensor going from off to on for about two minutes. Now let me show you how you can do the two minutes thing with code. So go to your file editor if you've got access to your configuration.yaml file and your automation.yaml files. Wherever you get that access from, either from file editor or Visual Studio or whatever, that's how we can get to this. So let's go in our example, we've got this set up in automation.yaml. If I scroll down, we should see this part here and I'm highlighting now. This has been just been created by um, the automation UI. And in here, you can add a uh, four condition. So on line 150, you can see four and you put a colon in there, you go and put enter, double space, and here you can set, for example, hour, minutes, and seconds. I'm saving this, so we're all good. Whenever we make any changes uh, in the code, we need to go into settings and reload automations. Reloading automations, we're gonna go go see yes, and we're gonna look at the notifications uh, message numbers, so we're waiting for this automation reloaded, and we're looking for notification now because it's stayed at one because i have a previous message uh, it's all good but if it pops up a higher number than we had before 
and probably your automations file uh, isn't working. So you need to go and troubleshoot it, right? So that's, that's always fun. So back to us. So now let's go and test this all out. Go to the developers tools, find your motion center. That's what the, the trigger point. Click on it and you'll see here is an on and off. So if you go on and you set state, click it, and that point, this whole thing will trigger and we'll see the stream on the Apple TV. Now, if you're getting value out of this video, if you just like this video, that will help me with the YouTube algorithm a lot. You can consider subscribing if you're finding value out of the tutorials. There are many more coming in the next year in 2021. And if you actually need custom tailored help with your smart home and you, you need just a little dedicated time, then you can go check out my home automation sessions that I have on my website. Now with the next automation that we're gonna look at, we're gonna look at actually using the Apple TV as a trigger point for other things in our smart home. So the reason why we are integrating Apple TV into Home Assistant, into our smart home, is because that we can actually use the information that comes out of the device to make other things happen in our room. So in an example I give you, is a uh, movie night. Instead of you triggering movie night and asking your voice assistant or pressing a button, if you actually start a movie on Apple TV, then that can automatically set up things around you. So what we're gonna, I'm gonna show you now is actually you can create a scene. And by creating a scene, it's a series of things, of statuses, of devices that you actually want when that happens, and that sounds a bit complicated, but I'm gonna show you, and it's not that difficult. First of all, we need to create a scene. So go to your configuration, and it should be right under automations, you should find scenes. Click on scenes. Now I have two set already. I have one already set up, and a very, very simple setup. Just click this button, add scene, and then you'll get to this screen. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to edit my uh, existing scene to show you how it all works. And edit scene is this little pencil here on the right hand side. So click that. And this is exactly the same thing you will see when you start. Well, very similar at least. And I'll show you how you can build it up. So first thing you'll need to do is your name. You need to give your scene a name. Make it descriptive. Icon, I'm using again the MDI format with movie, so you can see this little movie thing, which is quite cool. And what you do is you have, I have one, two, three, four, five devices that I'm controlling. Okay, so you, you will start with just this empty add, add a device or add an entity. And you, in my example, I'm adding entities and you pick an entity and it will go in the list. So for example, if I pick front porch, add it here, or I can add another light, I can add the hallway one, and the hallway one will appear here, for example. For each device or entity you actually pick out of the list, you need to click on it and you need to set the status that you desire when the actual scene triggers. So in my example, I want living one to be off because that light is right on top of the television, well, close to the television, and that's in my line of sight when I'm on the sofa. So I want that to be off, right? So you just click it off. Now, if you want it to be on, you'll click this and it will, you know, you'll put it on. This light um, actually have it a specific color, temperature and brightness and color palette, and it's set up in exactly the same way. So every time the scene runs, it, the light is gonna be set the same way regardless of the previous status of the light. Click on save. We can trigger a scene from an automation and we look for the Apple TV playing anything. And in terms of a fallback, I'm gonna be using Plex. So Plex is a, an, a media streaming device, basically like a DIY Netflix that I have. I have a Plex running on the Apple TV. So anytime the Plex runs something or something else is running on the Apple TV, then it will trigger movie night. So go to your configurations tab, go to automations and click add a new automation. And we'll start with an empty automation. Automation is gonna be called trigger movie scene Apple TV is running. So we're looking at the platform state and we are gonna be looking for media, media player. 
ATV, so that's the name of my Apple TV, the one I've set up, set it up to. And here, a couple of things you can do. You can either use on, or you can use uh, playing. So in the developer tools, you see playing on pulse. Uh, I believe you can use off and on, but uh, let me know in the comment section below if that isn't right, uh, and uh, if it's not the best way of doing it. Okay, so to add two triggers, um, just click add trigger, and add another one still with the state and I'm going to look for my Plex on uh, Plex for Apple TV living room and again I'm going to put the same thing and I say on so they both need to be uh, it's either or either or trigger will trigger this automation uh, the conditions I'm going, to, I'm going to get to that soon the action is going to be activate scene so a scene can be activated or it cannot be deactivated. And the scene, you can pick your scenes, They're very simple, so you pick it up. And so let's save it in the meantime so we don't lose what we're doing. And now we can work on the condition because the conditions are always optional anyway. And the condition I'm gonna add in, I'm gonna add a condition when I'm looking at actual, uh, I want it to be running only at night time, right? So I want it running at night time because I want uh, lights turning on during the day when I'm watching a movie, because that's not necessary. So I'm going to use the sun, and, I say, and I'm going to say, so it's going to be after sunset, before sunrise. So that should be should cover our night time. So we're going to use sunset, sunrise as a sort of a nighttime parameter. We can now execute it, we can actually test it out. Now executing it is only going to test, as I mentioned before, it's only going to test the fact that the scene can be triggered, but it's not actually going to test the uh, settings with the sun, for example, and all the other stuff. Now this code as usual is in my blog. If you just Google Leonardo smarthomemakers.com slash blogs. There are also other things that you can do with the Apple TV. You can actually use it as a remote function. So you can send commands like left, menu, down, up, and you can create buttons and things like Disney Channel, or uh, Netflix. So depending on where your Netflix tile is, is on your Apple TV, you can have little cards set up in Home Assistant. Now I haven't quite worked that out yet. That's the reason why I'm not showing you in this tutorial. But let me know if you're interested or if you've actually done it yourself. Leave a comment down below so you help me out. Because I'm actually trying to get it to work and it's sort of work before I actually can put it on video. So if you want to learn more about automations, I've got another video where I've got seven automation ideas with NFC tags that you can actually use in Home Assistant, but you can actually use them, for example, in HomeKit or in other platforms. Support the channel by liking, subscribing, check out the donations tab down below, and if you need a custom tailored smart home session, let me know down below. There's a coupon in the description down below. We've also got affiliate links if you want to support the channel. That would be great. Stay safe. See you in the next one.